So this is one of the recent boards I've designed for work. And essentially it's just a magnetometer board, but the nice thing is it's really tiny. It's about two centimeters in diameter. And what is on here is actually on the left, you see this is magnetometer IC. In the middle there's an SCM32L4 microcontroller. And on the right here, there's a CAN transceiver. Down here we have a little 3.3 volt regulator. And this is actually quite a cool thing. This is a serial wire debug probe, which I'll show you in just a second. So instead of using a connector, I can actually use something like a flying probe. Then we have some CAN connections over here, which go into the transceiver and some power connections. Right now I've just hooked that up to um, a USB cable. And I'll show you in Altium how I designed this board. It's really, really simple. And then also in the next video, we'll actually look at writing the driver for this board. So how do we interface the SCM32 microcontroller with this magnetometer um, IC by I squared C? And we'll do that from scratch using the data sheet. All right, so let's get started. So before we get started, uh, there's actually some news from JLC PCB, which I saw on their Instagram account, and that actually they will be offering many more components. And more importantly, at least for me, they will support double side assembly this year, which is really, really cool news. Now the board I just showed you was actually assembled by JLC PCB, and I used the SMT assembly service and their parts library to find the right parts for this board. And that's what I'd like to go through with you now. How did I, how did I select the parts? How did I put them together on a schematic by reading the data sheets? And then how did I do the layout and routing? And you could really help me out by visiting the link in description underneath this video, signing up and ordering boards of your own. Thanks. So for work, I actually use Altium instead of KiCad. And I'd like to show you some more about Altium in some future videos. So this is the, will be the first one. And here we actually have the board up in the 3D Altium render. We can see the, the back and the front. And so let's go through how I designed this board and why I chose the components I did. So the main priority of this board was to be as small as possible and compact as possible to have a CAN interface and just five volts power on the input. So right here at the bottom, we have ground and five volts, and then we have the CAN differential pair. Going into the CAN transceiver over here, we have an SCM32 microcontroller in there, interfacing with a magnetometer sensor over there. And this is interfacing via I2C. The SCM32 processor actually doesn't uh, do very much processing. It could, of course, but essentially it puts everything on the CAN bus. Interestingly, I also put in this serial wire debug, um, essentially probe connect, and this is from, uh, from Tag Connect it's called, and I'll show you the company website in just a second. But essentially this means I don't always have to solder on my own serial wire debug connectors. It saves space, cost, and we can program these boards really quickly on the fly. Lastly, we also have this really small 3.3 volt regulator, so it's five volts in and 3.3 volts out. So let me show you the parts I picked. So starting with this Tag Connect serial wire debug probe, this is actually what I'm putting on all of my boards now instead of connectors. So we have this essentially flying probe which goes onto the board, and this part goes via an adapter into just a typical ST-Link version 2 or version 3. Uh, it costs about $34, but it's well worth the money. Regarding sensors, the magnetometer is something I found on the JLC PCB parts library, and this is a pretty basic uh, three-axis magnetic sensor called the QMC5883L. It's really small, it's I squared C, and it has an okay output data rate at about up to 200 Hertz. Again, because of the size constraints, I went with a very, very small QFN package STM32 microcontroller, an STM32L4 in this case. So it has enough processing power to actually do some calculations, maybe some calibration of the magnetometer, but essentially it didn't have to be too powerful, it just had to be very small. And it happened that JLC had this in stock for a reasonable price, so that chose that one. Then of course we also needed a CAN transceiver to actually relay um, the information we got from the magnetometer to the main system. And I ended up cho choosing a basic part from a JLC PCB. It needed to have a high enough data rate and this one actually goes up to five megabits per second. And the nice thing about this TGA1051, there's a specific version where actually the CAN uh, differential pair is at five volts and the IO is at 3.3 volts. That means it can interface with a standard microcontroller. And that's why I chose this one. Finally, the regulator is just a really simple, really small package again for size, SOT23 MCP1700. That's five volts in, 3.3 volts out. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't need large output uh, capacitors. So I can go with a very small one microfarad output capacitor, again, to reduce size. So let's have a look at the schematic now. So here we are back in Altium on the schematic page. Normally for larger schematics, I will create several pages and then split up, for example, the microcontroller section, the sensor section, and so on. But this is such a small, simple design that we can fit this onto one uh, small page, one A4 page. Uh, I've sectioned the, the schematic into several parts. We have the regulator, CAN transceiver, magnetometer, microcontroller, 
and lastly, the serial ID of our probe connector. So let's go through them one by one, starting at the top left of the regulator. So if I zoom in here, we have essentially five volts of input coming in from a pin, and that's going to a farad bead into a C1, which forms essentially a low pass filter for, for really high frequency uh, uh, interference, so we can filter that out. That goes into our MCP1700 regulator, and as I said before from the data sheet, we essentially only need a one microfarad input and output capacitor for this thing to be stable and to perform its job. And that gives us 3.3 volts at the output. Let's just have a look at the microcontroller. That is actually being fed with these 3.3 volts. Uh, we can see we have several power pins. Each one of them needs to have a 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor. And what I like to do is just have a bulk dupe coupling or bypass capacitor on the board. And typically that'll be something like 10 microfarads. Something near this package, which we'll see later in the, in the routing and layout stage. Um, I'm actually using the internal crystal, so I'm not actually using any sort of high-speed external oscillator or something like that. I'm using the internal crystal. Timing is not particularly important in this case. I'm adding a bit of filtering to the reset line, 100 nanofarad capacitor. And for this STM32 microcontroller, there's typically a, a pull-up resistor pulling this line high internally. Boot zero essentially determines the boot mode. So if we, if we want to start up the bootloader or not, in, in our case, we didn't need that, so I just tied that directly to ground. Usually it's a good practice to put, a, for example, a 10K resistor to ground in case you do want to change the voltage level of this boot zero pin, but we always program it via serial ID debug, so we didn't need to do that. Then from the data sheet or using STM32 cube IDE or cube MX, we can do the pin out of this device. Now there's actually not much to it. As I said before, the magnetometer is an I2C device, so we need two I2C lines, of course, SCL, the clock, and the data. And these are being pulled up by pull-up resistors, 2.2 uh, kilo ohms. That's typically what I use for a 3.3 volt rail, and this is sufficient also for fast mode I2C at 400 kilohertz. Now, if you're worried about power consumption or something like that, you can of course make these pull-up resistors higher. The magnetometer, as we'll see later, also has a data-ready uh, output. So every time the magnetometer has new data, the pin will go high and indicate to the STM32 that we should pull some data. We've also connected a uh, CAN transceiver to this device. So we have the CAN RX and TX lines, as well as we can change the CAN silent mode over here. And last but not least, we have the serial wire debug, the data and the clock pins. And that's pretty much all there is for the microcontroller. And here we have the CAN transceiver. So on the left side, we have all the lines coming from the microcontroller, the receive and transmit line, as well as the silent mode. Then on the right-hand side, we have the CAN differential pair, which actually drives everything to the outside world and receives from the outside world. Now I've indicated in Altium using this directive that this is actually a differential pair, and this will be important and rooted in later, and labeled them respectively. So CAN underscore P and CAN underscore N to indicate to Altium that this is a differential pair. Now CAN um, lines or the CAN bus, especially for longer cable runs, will require a termination resistor across this differential pair, and that should be uh, 120 ohms. Now, as I said before, this CAN transceiver is quite nice because it actually has different voltage levels for the driving side and for the microcontroller interface side. So for the driving side, I'm actually using the filtered five volts. And for the interface side, I'm using 3.3 volts. And of course, I have 100 nanofarads decoupling on each of those lines. Then essentially almost the centerpiece of this board, which is the most important chip, the sensor, is this magnetometer here. And this is essentially just taken from the data sheet. So we have the uh, I2C squared lines, the magnetometer data ready line, various decoupling and bypass capacitors, as well as these extra capacitors down here. Now the reason for those are actually in the, uh, given in the data sheet. So we can actually usually find in a data sheet typical application schematics. So for example, dual supply, but what we have is a single supply schematic here, and you can see they require us to put various external capacitances connected to this magnetometer, and that's exactly what I've done. What I also like to do for I squared C devices or any device with an address is actually write that in the schematic, which I've done over here. And that'll save the software engineer some time later looking through the data sheet, figuring out what the I2C address is supposed to be. Especially if, for example, the I2C um, device might have address pins, so you can actually change the address. So OXOD in hex is the address. Lastly, I've also um, just indicated on the schematic that we're using the serial wire debug probe from Tag Connect, and essentially just my serial wire debug data and clock, the reset line, 3.3 volts, and ground is connected to that. And that is pretty much all there is to the schematic. So really simple, regulator, microcontroller, CAN transceiver, the main sensor, which is the magnetometer, and some way of programming this STM32 microcontroller. So let's move over to layout and routing. So here we are in the PCB editor, and let's talk about layout and routing. The most important part for this board, as I said before, 
is that this board is as small as possible. So pretty much two centimeters in diameter. Uh, and we had some certain mechanical constraints, for example, these notches, the general size of the board and so on. And I had to fit this board around it. So some routing might not be as optimal if I had the freedom with a larger design and so on, but I think I've made it uh, fit fairly nicely. So let's have a look at the different parts. So we of course have the main microcontroller, the CAN transceiver to the right, the magnetometer to the left, the serial wire debug probe at the top, as well as the power input and CAN connections over here. The holes you see there and there are actually the tooling holes for the PCB, PCB manufacturer, GLC PCB in this case, just to make sure they can actually assemble this board. Now this board is a four layer board, as you can see at the bottom here in Altium, we have a top layer. The first inner layer is dedicated to a ground plane. The third inner layer is actually dedicated to the 3.3 volt rail and the lower layer or the bottom layer is a signal layer as well as the top layer. So let's go through them one by one. If I press two in Altium, I can switch to essentially the 2D view. So starting at the regulator, which is the bottom left over here, the most important part with regulators or with re uh, linear regulators is that the bypass capacitors are close to the pins. So here we have the ferrite bead and that's feeding into the input of the, of the regulator and the regulator input has a decoupling capacitor right really close to it. The regulator's output, the 3.3 volts is over here and that also has a decoupling capacitor really close to it. So make sure they're really nice and close. The same thing goes for any other chip that requires bypass on decoupling. All of these decoupling capacitors are really close to the respective pins. So the VCC pins on this STM32 microcontroller or the VCC pins of this CAN transceiver or this magnetometer. As you can see, I've tried to place them as close as possible, short and wide traces. That's what you should always do with any of these decoupling or bypass capacitors. There isn't actually that much more regarding the STM32 microcontroller other than routing out the connections, for example, to the serial wire debug connector or the I squared C lines, which go into the magnetometer on the left here. And those I've kept fairly short. One thing I've unfortunately had to do for the sake of space is actually move the pull-up resistors of the I squared C lines up here. And typically they should be, there shouldn't be any stubs, for example, on, on data lines. Of course, for I squared C, the, the frequency or the rise time is so slow that it's fine to have stubs on these lines. You won't have any problems. But ideally, these pull-up resistors should be as close as possible to the master I squared C device, which in this case is the SM32 microcontroller. But for the sake of space, I had to move them away a bit. But in this case, because it's such a slow protocol, um, uh, this is absolutely fine. One thing regarding the CAN transceiver as well is that I've placed this 120 ohm um, termination resistor pretty much directly at the input to these CAN high and CAN low pins of the transceiver. One thing I actually had to do with this board is actually use pretty small vias. So the vias you see here are actually 0 0.2 millimeter drill with about 0 0.5 millimeter um, diameter. And I did this to essentially also to save space, but of course a really small VA diameter such as 0.2 millimeters increases the cost of, to manufacture this board. As I said before, the first inner layer is into a, a solid ground plane. The next inner layer is a, pretty much a solid 3.3 volt plane. Now for EMC, it would be better to do a, a ground plane here as well, and then stitch those two ground planes together. But for the simplicity of routing, I decided to just go with a 3.3 volt plane. Uh, the bottom layer here, Essentially, I just have some remaining traces. For example, for power traces, I've put a much wider trace in. So for example, the five volts for signal and data traces, I've made them a reasonable, reasonably thick size. Nothing too thin, nothing too thick. So as you can see, it's actually a really, really simple and straightforward design. The only problem is the size constraint, but we can get around that because it's such a low speed and um, low complexity board. Now in a future video, I'd like to show you how to actually program this board using the serial wire debug, how we can write a driver for this magnetometer from scratch using the data sheet, and maybe also how to interface with this CAN transceiver. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.